Hey, Steve. Do you have a minute now? Oh, I was just eating my lunch. What's up? Do you mind if I go back to my parents' house this weekend? I'm taking a day on Friday, so I'm thinking of going home from Friday to Sunday. Is that okay? That's fine. If you have three days, you can relax a little, right? Yeah, I think so too. I can talk with them a little bit. They are very upset that they couldn't come to see our new house, so I thought I'd at least show them pictures and videos. Good idea. Yeah, we finally got our home. Go visit your parents. Thank you. I already told my parents, so they're looking forward to it. Great. Well, we can take photos of our house today. I'll help you. That'd be great. Hey there, are you at home? Is everything okay? I'm out of town for a bit right now, but everything is fine at home. No problems at all, just the same as usual. Good, good. How did your parents react? Yeah, they're very jealous. They think it's a great house for old people to live in as well. They can't wait to see the actual one. I bet. It's the house you worked so hard to come up with all by yourself. Well, I work for an architectural design firm, so I guess it's only natural. I know everything that relates to building a new house, so I was able to work on it smoothly. Thanks to you, I'm able to live comfortably. But it's not easy, you know. You have to look through a lot of documents and choose what you like, and then replace them into your own home. It's a lot harder than you think. Right, I'm sure it is. I could never do that. My parents were so happy with it, too. They were happy? Why? Of course. They'd be happy if my wife built a great house. Oh, your parents are surprisingly good at giving compliments, huh? Right? I was surprised, too. I'm sorry I'm away on your day off, but thanks to you, I feel like I was able to do something nice to them. I'm glad to hear that. When you get home, I have a surprise for you. Surprise? What is it? If I told you now, it wouldn't be a surprise. But I'm curious to hear what you have in mind. Nope. I'll keep it a secret until you get home. Well, I'm curious, but anyway, I'm coming home tomorrow. Steve, I just came back home. Where are you? You're back already? That was fast. My parents paid mind to you and told me to go home early, so I'm back. I mean, what's going on? What? Oh, I told you I had a surprise for you. Why are your parents here? I didn't hear about them. If they were to come, you had to tell me. I would have bought them some sweets. I wanted to surprise you. I did get surprised. I feel sorry I can't serve them anything. No need to worry. They're gonna be here for good. <laughs> What? What do you mean, they'll be here? Mom and Dad really like the house you built, and they say they want to live with us, so I said why not? They'll live together from now on. What? Why are you deciding on your own? You made such an important decision without asking me, and you let them move in while I'm away? I wanted to surprise you. You happy to live with my parents, right? What do you mean I'm happy? Don't decide on your own. I'm sorry, but they have to leave. Why? We have an extra room upstairs, and we have a guest room. There's no problem if they live with us. The room upstairs is for our future child. The guest room is for the guests when they come to our house. Neither of those rooms are for your parents, so they can't live here. Don't be so stingy. Mom and Dad are totally into it. I can't ask them to move back in that shabby house. Shabby house? That's disrespectful to your parents. I'm sure they worked hard to build that house. But they said they have no interest in that shabby house anymore. <laughs> what? Anyway, I don't have a choice for today, but you'll have to ask them to leave tomorrow. I don't remember hearing that they would be moving in. What? You're really stubborn. You understand? Fine. Hey, Steve. I just got home from work. Why are they still here? Didn't you talk to them? I did, but they won't leave the house. But that doesn't mean they can stay with us. You made this problem, so you should do something about it. Well, besides, I was shocked when I saw what was in the fridge. What? There were high-grade steak, pork, and fish. There were also a lot of beer, wine, and sake. They said they bought them for us, too. That's great. It means they appreciate you. Hey, do you have any idea how much it costs? Your parents live on a pension, right? I don't think they can afford them. Don't you have any gratitude? Huh? They bought us such luxury food. You need to thank them, right? Are you kidding me? I didn't ask them to do the shopping. I promised you they'd leave by the end of the day. That's too harsh. I mean, you're my wife, so you're supposed to take care of my parents. If something happens, of course I will. But they seem to be doing fine. There's no need to take care of them. Don't say like that. When we got married, we promised not to live together with our parents. Did you forget it? 
That's true, but things have changed. No choice. What is that? That's so selfish. It's insane for you to let them stay at her house while I'm gone without even telling me. Isn't that too harsh? You don't even do your duty as a wife, and all you do is complain about my parents. You can leave if you don't like it. <laughs> huh? Why do I have to leave? Because you don't want my parents to stay with us, right? Then you have no choice but to leave. You and your parents, what kind of mind do you guys have? I don't want to hear you complain anymore. I have to work late. I'll leave the rest to you. Hey. Hey, what the hell are you doing? Mom and Dad are confused. Huh? Why aren't you doing the chores? You only cook your own meal, do your own laundry. What is this? I told you to tell your parents to leave. I didn't allow them to move in with us or anything. Why should I do the housework when they're staying at my house without my permission? I'm not a housekeeper. What's with that tone? You're so rude. Let me tell you something. Your parents, they eat everything in the fridge. They use a lot of detergent. They use a lot of tissues and throw them away. They don't take out the garbage. What the hell are they thinking? Playing around every day. What are they up to? You're so cheap. They're old. You should be nice to them. I'm saying, why should I? What? Your parents have their house. I'm telling you to ask them to go home. Why can't you understand? Do you hate my parents that much? You keep picking on old people and never do any housework. Who do you think you are? You're my wife. That's what they say too. You, family, I have no words. I built that house. It's not my in-law's house and I don't even remember allowing them to live with us. And they've done whatever they want. I told you, if you don't like it, you can leave. You're going to let them stay no matter what. I'm the eldest son. I'm supposed to live with them. I don't want you, my wife, to tell me what to do. Fine, then I'm divorcing you. What? Are you insane? I am sure. Hey, pick up the phone. What is it? What the hell is going on? What? I told you to leave. I heard you gave them divorce documents and kicked my parents out. I just got a call from them. Why the hell do we have to leave? Why? Because it's my house. Don't be stupid. It's also my house. You're the one who's stupid. You took advantage of the fact that I'm in the architectural work. And you left everything to me. The design, the construction, the financial plan, everything. That's because I trusted you. I trusted you to do it because you're used to it and it's faster. You know what? I own this house. What? I did apply for a loan under your name, but it was denied because of your low income and debts. What? I didn't hear that. It's not like you didn't hear. You didn't listen to me, right? I tried to talk to you about it, but you told me you'll leave everything to me. See? You didn't listen to me. First of all, you didn't come back home much. Oh, but how come it's under your name? Because the loan application was a Plus, I paid the half of it with my savings from when I was single. See? So, it's you guys who are leaving. I'm your husband. You can kick my parents out, but you don't have to kick me out, right? No, I'm divorcing you. I've given your parents the papers. So read them through and send it to the lawyer. Wait a minute. I'm sorry I brought my parents here without permission. I'm gonna ask them to go back to that shabby house. That's fine then, right? You're abandoning them. How terrible. Hey, that's what you wanted, right? There's another reason why I decided to divorce you. What is it? You took money out of my bank book without permission, didn't you? No, that wasn't me. Then who? You're the only one who knows where I keep my book. It didn't look like someone hunt out. And you're the only one who knows the password. Um, maybe I borrowed it once. Now I remember. I was told at work that we were collecting money for the party. I didn't have any money on me at the time, so I borrowed it, I guess. You also gave the my money you stole to your parents as allowance, right? You were just trying to look good. I didn't do that. Then what's with their extravagant lifestyle? Not only food, but also casino and horse racing? Betting all day. That's a very unbelievable lifestyle for two people living on pensions. Maybe they were saving for their retirement. If they're enjoying, then that's fine. Not my problem. Then what is this picture? What's that? It's a picture of you and your parents enjoying a horse race. This. When was this taken? My colleague who attended the wedding remembered your face. He texted me to tell me he found a man looking similar to you. What? The picture shows you giving money to them. Isn't this the best proof? Your paycheck must be full of debt. There's no way you could afford a horse race. That's... If you're still going to lie, I'm going to talk to the lawyer. Well, the pictures at the racetrack are the best proof, so you'll never win. You'd go that far. 
Absolutely. I worked my ass off to build this new house, but you let your parents live together without permission and living as freely as they want? And then you ask me to leave if I don't like this fact? Give me a break. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Then what was your plan? My parents didn't have enough money to live on, so they wanted to live with us. We built a new house, so they pleaded, and I wanted to afford them. I don't understand why you can afford them. I'll ask them to go back home, so please forgive me. I'll put your life back in order. I mean, they can't go back to their home, right? What? You think I don't know anything? I work in the architectural work. I can find out what's going on at a house in no time. Oh. I thought it was weird that they moved in all of a sudden, so I inspected it. Your parents didn't work, spent their days gambling, and they even got into debt. But they couldn't keep up, so they sold the house. They came to our house because they had nowhere to live, huh? You knew all that? It's not fair. Why did you keep it secret? Of course, I didn't know it in the beginning. You were acting so strangely, so I looked into it. I was shocked too. Sorry. But what shocked me even more was that you were withdrawing my money and giving it to your parents. And moreover, you and your parents bet it together and now you guys are in debt? Huh? I didn't mean to. When I came back from my parents' house, you weren't home because you were out gambling. When you had your current debt, you promised me that you would never gamble again, but you betrayed me. I didn't betray you. But you did lie to me, didn't you? That's... I'm sorry. I feel sorry from my bottom of my heart. Nothing will change, even if you apologize. Anyway, I want you to leave too, along with your parents. There's no way I can live with people who cheated on your wife. I couldn't help it. If your parents cried on you, you'd do the same thing, wouldn't you? I don't know. I've never experienced before. I wanted to help my parents. But you tried to abandon them earlier. You said you would kick them out and you wanted to stay in the house. I made a slip of the tongue. Whatever. Why did I marry you? I hate myself. After all, you just loved yourself. No, not like, I'm worried about my parents and I'm worried about you. I wonder how selfish you are. There's nothing to be worried about. I built the house I always wanted, and I don't have a mortgage because of my savings. I earn twice as much as you do, so I don't think I'll have any trouble making ends meet. You make that much money? I didn't know. Then help me out. I have to pay off my debts now. I know, you have your parents' debts too, but I'm not going to help you guys, so please get the hell out of my house. Don't be so cold. We're a family, right? Why don't we help each other? I've already decided to divorce you. Nothing will change. Don't forget to send the papers. Oh no, how am I supposed to live? How am I supposed to pay off that debt? I can't do this without you. That's none of my business. You're gonna have to talk to your parents and decide. Please, you have to help us. Nope. Oh yeah, I'm sure you'll hear from my lawyer soon. I'm going to charge you compensation. What? How am I supposed to pay that money? You know my financial situation. You guys tried to take over the house I built. At least I need to do this or I won't be satisfied. I've already told my lawyer everything, so any further discussion will be done through him. Oh my god, my life is over. I guess you have to live a completely different life from now on. Hope you and your family have a good luck. Hey, Zoe, help me. I had a hard time divorcing Steve, whose family is in debt. But thanks to the lawyer, we finally got divorced. Of course, I charged him compensation without mercy. Even after the divorce was finalized, he visited the lawyer's office and asked for a reduction. But the lawyer seemed to have managed it. No matter how much he asks, I will get my compensation paid. I need them to return the money they borrowed from me. Knowing that there was nothing they could do, Steve and his family rented a shabby apartment and live in a small room with three of them. Steve goes to work and has a part-time job after work, and his parents also have their own part-time jobs. However, they have to pay the compensation, the debt, and the money he stole from my bank book. So, even though they work hard, their lives are not getting any easier. And whenever they are together, they complain and live together. I am worried about whether they will be able to pay me back, but I am very happy to be rid of such parents and son. I am still working for the same architectural design firm. I am able to give more detailed advice to my clients because I built the house myself, and they are very happy with my advice. Seeing the happy faces of our clients is the best part of my life now. 
Daniel, you're acting weird. Why are you refusing it so much? It's not like I'm refusing it. I'm just saying there's no meaning. No meaning? Why? Because, you know, you can't go sightseeing here. You're just going to look into my room and see how messy it is, or look in my fridge and see what I'm eating, and check everything, right? You don't have time to do touristy things like eating local food or seeing the famous tower. I'm sure that's how it's going to be. I'll just end up cleaning your room, doing laundry and cooking. At best, I'll go shopping for dinner. I could at least stock the fridge. See? You're going to waste money on transportation to come here to do that. I'm making a good living in my own way. Don't worry. I'm an adult too, you know. But if I go from Friday night, I can get all that stuff taken care of on Saturday. Then on Sunday, we can walk around the town and go home at night. I'd love to do something date-like once in a while. You'd have a hard time if we had a busy weekend like that. It's not like you have nothing to do. I'm thinking about you. Thanks for your concern, but it's not like I visit you every week, so it's not tough for me. Yes, it is. Of course it's tough. If you go to work on Monday in that condition, I'm sure you'll make a mistake. And if you do, you'll cause trouble for everyone around you. I don't want you to make a mistake at work and get fired or have your salary lowered. I don't want you to have to go through that. It's for your own good. You're even thinking about that? So, does that mean it's too hard for you to come over here? No, no, that's a different story. I deserve to have a hard time, and I'm relieved to be home. I can relax, and I get to do nothing on the weekends. I get to restore my energy. It's advantageous for me. It's not the same as when you come over here. Is that so? Something's weird. There's nothing strange about it. It's natural. There's a big difference between going back to our sweet home and being at a place where I'm working alone. This is a temporary home. But this home is a rent too. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not talking about renting or owning a house. It's our home, a place for both of us, a place to go home. But here is a temporary place, so I don't feel at home. Hmm, I feel like I understand, but not really. Is that okay? Of course, it's fine. Anyway, you prefer to come back home, then I go visit you even if it costs money. That's what I mean. Besides, I heard from my colleague that if we work far from home and when we want to go back to our home, the transportation fee will be deductible as long as we file a tax return. So it's definitely a better deal, right? I didn't know that. Well then, it's better for you to come back. I mean, if you had said that from the beginning, I would have been convinced right away. Why have you been telling me all those weird logic or reason? I thought you knew too. It's not weird at all to me. Well, I don't know, but I get it. What's that? Which is it? I don't understand you. I don't know what you're thinking, but I understand that it's not strange to you. I don't understand completely, but if you insist, I won't ask you anymore. I'm glad you understand. This is definitely the best way. I've told you many times that I'd visit you, but every time you always have some weird reason or logic and refuse me. I've been a little worried about it. I wondered why you were so reluctant. Isn't that kind of weird? I was actually a little worried that you might have a girlfriend there. If you have a reason for wanting to use your deductible for transportation, that makes sense. You should have told me earlier. Wait a minute. You suspected me of cheating on you? That's stupid. There's no way I would do something like that. Right. You were thinking about the family. I'm sorry I suspected you for even a second. There's no need to apologize. If you understand, that's fine. Don't worry about that kind of thing anymore. Yeah, I love you so much. I can't wait to see you. 
I'm looking forward to seeing you when you get back. Me too. Well, good night. Now one problem is solved, but another one came up. Before Daniel went off to work away from home, we were considering buying an apartment. But since he left, we haven't talked about it at all. I wanted to discuss what we should do, so I asked him about it, but it turned into a fight. Daniel, do you have any idea which place you want to live? I'm asking this because I wanted to get ready to buy an apartment. I wanted to decide on our place to live. That's not something you should be asking me when I'm working away from home. Why do you always get so ahead of yourself? Why don't we look for a place together when I get back? But then, I'll have to wait for another year? Until you finish your work there? I'm not even allowed to talk about it. You could at least tell me where you want to live. I didn't say like that. This assignment was originally supposed to be for three years. But there's a chance to be extended, depending on how things go at work. I can't decide to buy an apartment when I don't know what's going to happen. I'm worried too, you know. But even if we can't decide now, why don't we start thinking about it? At least... Decide where we're going to live. Then, when you finish working there, we can make a move right away. I'm not talking about buying it right now. I just want to discuss about it. Is that a no too? No, I don't know when I finish. You don't know what the real estate status will be at that time. There is a possibility that land price in the city you want to live in might go up drastically. That's a waste of money. If that's the case, it's better not to make such a decision in the first place. First of all, we have to think about whether it's better to rent or own a house. Wait, what do you mean? Before you left, you said you wanted an apartment too, right? Did you change your mind? It's going to be our property. It's not like I changed my mind. I mean, I'm put off by your enthusiasm for buying an apartment. I was thinking that we don't have to rush. Why do you say that? Because if we are thinking of buying an apartment, we don't necessarily have to get it. At the very least, we need to gather information and save up some money. I think it's too late to start when you suddenly want it. We need a plan when we think about the finance, right? You know what? You're always so forward with your life planning, and I'm always being pushed around. That's what I don't like. I don't feel good, you know. What? I didn't mean it like that. Did I really push you around that much? You're always like that. You've been pushing me around like you're doing right now. You're always taking things in the direction you want them to go. That's selfish, isn't it? No, I'm not. I'm thinking about us. I always want to be happy together with you, Daniel. You didn't come along with me to this town and you're trying to go ahead with your plan to buy an apartment just because you want one. Isn't that awful? Maybe you make more money than me and you might think it's stupid plan to quit your job and follow me. Then why don't you give something else up for me? How terrible! Is that how you thought? I don't know how to say but I feel like you don't respect me. That's not true. But if you felt so, I must have done something wrong in the way I tell you or the way I talk to you. I'm sorry. You're not that enthusiastic about buying an apartment, right? I'm sorry for trying to force you to go through with it. Before I get into it or not, you're too forward. That's what I don't like about. It's not just about the apartment. You want to take over the conversation, right? You think I'm mad because of a childish reason like that? You've got to be kidding me. You think I'm stupid, don't you? No, I'm sorry. I don't understand why you're mad. Why is it? I didn't say anything difficult, did I? I'm saying you shouldn't proceed on your own. When you decide on something or do something, you have to hear my opinion and feelings before taking action. Why do I have to tell you? 
Understood. I'll do that from next time. After this message, he started to take over the conversation and his male, chauvinistic comments began to stand out. I had a bad feeling about this because he had been so nice to me, but he suddenly changed. It was clearly someone else's effect, and if it had been a woman, I could see a trouble coming up. I was thinking about it all by myself, but it was a few months later that my bad premonition came true. I'm sorry I haven't been able to spend time with you. I'll be home early next Friday, so let's go eat out. The restaurant you mentioned the other day sounds good. Let's go there. Kate, what's wrong? Nothing. You just sent to the wrong person. What's going on? No, it's not what you think. Don't get it wrong. She's my colleague at work, Kate. We were planning to go out for dinner since it was a tough week. There's nothing personal. Will you understand? But last time, you said that your colleague are all men. It's different from what you said. Besides, would you say, I can be home early when you ask a woman out to dinner? You know, you only notice what I don't want you to notice. Stop using your annoying skills. I told you not to worry. You were cheating on me. That's why you didn't want me there. So that's what was happening. Now it all makes sense. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Bingo. I was cheating on you. I'm working my ass off too. Is there a problem? Unlike you, Kate is a super nice girl who stands up for me. She's not selfish. She puts me first in everything she does. She listens to me when I tell her how hard I'm working. Unlike you, she's not condescending. She cooks and takes care of the house. When have I ever been condescending? I never say something like that. I mean, when did I say? I can tell by your attitude. The attitude. I work too, but I'm doing all this housework-ish attitude. You should notice that. That's not true. It's not right for you to say that. When I came home tired, I often didn't cook, did I? Remember when I said, sorry, I bought some food today? I never did something condescending, did I? Really? Well, I felt so. You were giving me a bad vibe. Maybe that girl Kay told you something about me. She kept telling you bad things about working wives and you believed her. You're so naive. You've got to be kidding me. Kate is not that kind of woman. She works to support her sick parents and earn money for her brother's tuition. There aren't any girls like that nowadays. Daniel, do you believe that? Of course I do. And like you, she doesn't work just for herself. She's a good girl, isn't she? I'm not just working for me. I'm working for both of us. I don't know if I can believe that. You can't believe me, but you can believe this girl? I think it's very suspicious. But I did my best to save up the down payment for our future apartment. You didn't put any money in our shared savings account, though. I never once urged you to save money either, did I? I have put in at least $2,000 in savings. Are you making fun of me? That's enough. I can't talk to you. I hate your attitude, so it's only natural that I cheat on you. We're getting divorced. I'll take half of your property. $150,000. Understood? Give me a break. The next week, I received a response regarding the divorce, so I turned it in. It all happened so suddenly. I didn't really feel the end, but being mentioned by my parents and friends, I could finally feel the sadness and loss. I moved out of my room and went to live near my work. One day, I received a message from Daniel. 
Hey, answer the phone. Are you kidding me? What is that $2,000 you transferred? We had a shared bank account for the apartment purchase, right? I returned the money you transferred into that account. You put $2,000, right? $2,000 is not enough. I told you I'd get $150,000 for the half of the savings and property division, right? I know you had a fund of $300,000 to buy an apartment. Now that we're divorced, we have to split it 50-50 as property division. So transfer the $150,000 to me. Aren't you misunderstanding? I don't have any money to give you. You can't play dumb with me. The money you saved when we were married is ours. So even if you saved it yourself, you have to share it with me. You can't pocket the money. Huh? You don't know anything? What? Well, $200,000 is the one I saved when I was single, and my parents gave me $20,000 four times a year, so that makes $80,000. The remaining $20,000 is what I saved after we got married. So, the only joint property is the last $20,000. And the other $280,000? The property before marriage and the property that was given as a gift are called separate estate. They're not subject to property division. That's a lie. That's not what I heard. What are you talking about? It's money I worked so hard to save. Do you have any idea how much I studied investing? I don't know what Kate told you about me, but what I just said is not a lie. By the way... The remaining $20,000 is going to be used as child support. Do you understand? Your property is zero. Did you forget about the agreement? Seriously? What am I supposed to do? I'm broke. She didn't have enough money to start a business, and she was limited on how much loan she can take out. So I borrowed $30,000 on her behalf. Even if her business doesn't succeed... I thought we still have $150,000 from you. So I thought I'd have no problem at all. But no. What should I do? I don't know. Don't ask me. I can't help you. Sarah, I'm sorry. My bad. I'll apologize as many times as I have to. I'll get down on my knees or whatever. So can I pay the child support in installment? Please? Huh? Do you mean you'll pay them in installments later? So you want about $5,000 for now as a division of property? Yes, $5,000 or $3,000 is fine. I'm begging you. I'm having a harder time paying off the debt than I thought. Please, help me. Please, have mercy since we were a family. Huh? Don't be silly. Unlike me, she puts you first, right? Then shouldn't you tell about this to her first? I'm sorry. I was so horrible to you at the time. I'm sorry. I was tricked by her. I'm sure you were. When she withdrew the money from my account, she changed her attitude and became cold. Now I lost contact with her. I was an idiot. I'm sorry. No matter how much you apologize... There's no way I can feel sorry for you. You deserve it. You said you couldn't trust me. Why should I do favors for someone who says things like that? I'm not that kind. You desired to take control and made the decision you wanted to make. You'll have to take the responsibility for your own actions until the end. Well then, bye! According to the story from his colleague, Daniel was too busy paying off his debts, so he gambled to get a lot of money. It was never going to work out, but as a result of further debts, I assume he had no choice. He quit his job and disappeared. He got what he deserved. On the other hand, I was dating a man who was introduced by my friend, and he proposed to me. We are having a fun time talking about marriage preparations and buying an apartment. 
Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and leave us a comment down below. It means a lot to us. See you next time.